Hey, what's up, Twelves? Sorry I, it took so long for me to get the movie out about the Niners. Um, Hawks defense depends on performance against the Niners. Since I took so long, I decided I might as well talk about their defensive performance against the Niners as well as their performance against Philadelphia and Minnesota. And I'll probably do another one next week on probably their overall performance defensively because six is the only area that's been doing well the past couple of weeks for Seattle against um, uh, LA, Carolina, and then Arizona this last Sunday. So I hope you enjoy. So coming to week 10 against San Francisco, to be honest, I didn't think Seattle's pass rush would ever get going because they pretty much couldn't sack anyone. You know, they played Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, um, Arizona. They they barely had any sacks. You know, Javion Clowney was their star pass rusher, and he only had, I think, believe up to that point, three or four sacks. And then Quentin Jefferson, one of their star defense pass rushers, you know, he doesn't look like a pass rusher. He was out in that, I believe he was out in, in that game. So, he, you know, pretty much they're going to the game against a really elite offense who was scoring, putting points on the board like crazy. And they surprised me. So their pass rush, led by Javion Clowney, pretty much made it difficult for San Francisco in the first half. Javion Clowney was in the backfield the whole, pretty much the whole game, stopping San Francisco's run game, pretty much making San Francisco one-dimensional. Um, uh, Seattle's offense, as you probably all know, pretty much couldn't get started for quite a while, as usual, you know, that's what they're known for. Um, and you get their, pretty much the big boost that got Seattle back in the game was Gavion Clowney's recovered fumble that was returned for a touchdown, getting Seattle on the board, and then after that, pretty much making it tough for San Francisco to do anything and getting Seattle back in the game. Clowney's fumble recovery for a touchdown was forced by defensive tackle Jaron Reed, who, after finally several games of being back from suspension, finally turned it on that night and had a few big plays for himself of his own. Clowney's final stats at the end of the game were five total tackles, five quarterback hits, and he was responsible for at least two um, quarterback sacks. And he recorded a season-high 10 quarterback pressures. In this game, we finally got to see linebacker Shaquem Griffin play a little bit of the pass rusher type role. He didn't make any spectacular plays, but he kind of he rushed Jimmy G quite a bit, giving a, giving other players an opportunity to get a sack. And he made a key made a key tackle in the second half. Seattle defensively had five total sacks and took the ball away three times and forced a turnover on downs. Overall, in the first three quarters, Seattle's defense played pretty well. They only gave up two scores on San Francisco's first offensive, first two offensive drives. Seattle's first defensive drive, they had two or three opportunities to get San Francisco off the field, but they had a penalty here and a penalty there. And when that happens, you're not going to stop anyone, no matter how bad they are. And late in the fourth quarter, San Francisco's offense resurged to bring the game back into overtime. Thanks to Seattle's offense turning the ball over multiple times late in the second half. Seattle's defense played a, what Pete Carroll would call, a rope -a dope style defense to pretty much keep Seattle in the game until Seattle's offense was able to score some points to win in overtime. Seattle's next game came two weeks later when Seattle went on the road to take on the Philadelphia Eagles in Philly. The big news of the week was the loss of their defensive star to Davion Clowney to a hip injury for that game. So Seattle turned in pass rusher Ziggy Ansah to make some plays, and he did along with Rasheem Green and Quentin Jefferson. Seattle's D-line was able to record three sacks and five turnovers, and forced a turnover on downs for the second week in a row. Ziggy Ansah had four total tackles, one and a half sacks, two tackles for loss, two quarterback hits, and one forced fumble. Rasheem Green and Quentin Jefferson also had sacks as well. Seattle's secondary had a great game that week, shutting out Philly and not letting him score anything until late in the second half, minus the one field goal. Seattle's secondary took away the ball three times between Bradley McDougal, Trey Flowers, and Quandre Diggs. Seattle would end up leaving Philly with a 17-10 victory and giving Seattle a 7-0, now 7-1, road record. The best in franchise history for Seattle team on the road. The next week, Seattle had another chance to play under the bright lights at home in Seattle on Monday Night Football, taking on the Minnesota Vikings, kind of a 2018 rematch game which happened to be on Monday night in Seattle as well. Coming into the game, Seattle had many players come down with the flu, and a lot of starters happened to play during the game with it. 
Seattle's defense was unable to get a sack off of Kirk Cousins during the game, but they hurried and rushed him the whole game, making it hard for them to get a big play. It can make matters worse, Seattle pretty much shut out Minnesota's run game, only giving up 78 total rushing yards. Rasheem Green, for the third time this season, ripped the ball away from running back Dalvin Cook, and it was recovered by safety Bradley McDougal. Cook was also injured on that play and would not return for the game. With Trey Flowers intercepting a pass, and cornerback Akeem King making a key pass breakup on fourth down to pretty much end the game. Minnesota did have another opportunity to score, but they fumbled on the kickoff. In the Monday night game, the Hawks sported their new uniform combos, their green on blue jerseys, which were epic, and they pretty much distracted me for the first half because they were so stunning. Now they need to bring back their throwback unis from the 80s. Well, I hope you enjoyed this movie. I'll try to get more movies out as soon as possible. It is Christmas week, so I might be a little bit slow, but I will try to get out. I'm probably doing a lot of quick short news flashes on different things that have been happening over the last couple weeks. Um, be sure to keep an eye out for that. Um, be sure, if you enjoyed this movie, be sure to give it a like and comment on what you liked about the movie. Um, be sure to subscribe because it'll make me happy. Please. I need it. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new movie. Thanks.